Welcome to the Monday, June 6th meeting of the Pembroke Board of Selectmen. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through a live video and audio broadcast on Comcast Government Access Channel 15 and is being recorded for broadcast at future dates. Comments made in open session will be recorded. Uh, we'll begin the meeting uh, with announcements. Bill? I do have an announcement, Mr. Chairman. Um, Pembroke Police Boys Club is sponsoring a uh, cornhole tournament. If anybody knows, doesn't know what a cornhole tournament is, it's uh, like the bean bags that they throw from uh, one little box to another, trying to get it in a little hole. Uh, the Lucky Dog Tavern and Grill down on Mattakesa Street um, offered to uh, run that for us for a uh, fundraiser for the Boys Club for uh, equipment and um, repairs uh, to the inside of the building. So that'll be uh, this Saturday, June 11th. Um, you can sign up right down there at the Lucky Dog at any time. They'll put your name on the list. As, um, you can do male, female, young, old, whatever you want to do. Um, it's going to start at 10.30 in the morning, and then as it goes through throughout the day, as people uh, uh, lose or whatever, then the winners just keep going up until they have a playoff at the end of the time. So uh, we're going to have some music there by uh, PJ the DJ is, is going to be there. He'll be doing announcements and uh, we'll have some uh, raffles, silent auctions and other stuff going on um, at the place during the day. The other thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to do pontoon boat rides on Furnace Pond um, during the day. So a lot of people that don't like throwing bean bags or whatever. Uh, might want to take a ride around Furnace Pond. There's a lot of people who probably haven't been on Furnace Pond before, so uh, we've got uh, five people that have donated their boats, including myself, to uh, to give the people uh, rides around the pond uh, during the day. And we will have a sunset cruise at night, uh, just before sunset, and uh, of course that'll be limited to the amount of boats we have and the amount of people that want to do the sunset. So. Just thought that we would uh, try something a little bit different and come broke, so we're going to do that. So you're all welcome to come. Uh, it's all geared up for family down there. Um, I know that the owner of the um, Lucky Dog is going to is going to have um, hot dogs, hamburgers, and stuff like that for the people that are involved in the uh, events uh, for free. And um, of course, naturally, you have to buy your own uh, liquid refreshment. But uh, it's up to you, um, you know, so we'd like to see you come down and uh, at least stop by. And if you don't do anything else, stop by and take a ride on the, you see uh, a lovely pond down there. So uh, looking forward to having it to be a good event. Thank you, Bill. Uh, any other announcements by anyone? Uh, hearing none, I would uh, like to welcome uh, the folks from PAC TV who are here tonight to give us their annual presentation on how well they have done for the town of Pembroke in the past year. And uh, we have Donna Rod Rodriguez, Julie Thompson, Dave Antoine uh, <coughs> here tonight. So I'll, I'll turn it over to you, Donna. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us here tonight. We really appreciate it. I see you all have your packets in front of you. Um, we have sent the board our 2015 annual report, just an update for all four of our towns. And I think we just want to start off to see if you have any questions after reviewing the report. And then we'd like to tell you a little bit about what's happening so far this year. Any questions for Donna? I don't have any Mark questions. I, yeah. <laughs> I think you're doing a great job. And, uh, well, thank I'm you. Thank you. Glad thank to you. have you here. Believe it or not, this month is coming up on four years since we've been providing supports and services to the town of Pembroke. So it's really surprising to us how quickly that time has gone and also how much everything has grown in such a short period of time. Um, Dave and I are hoping to give you updates on some of the general things that we've been doing, 
throughout this year, what some of our upcoming plans are, and Dave's going to talk to you a little bit about government. Actually, do you want to start with talking about some of the government meetings first? And sure. We're here for a town meeting. I'm not going to lie, it feels a little surreal to be on the other side of the camera, <laughs> the guy operating the camera. Um, but, you know, we've been with the lovely town of Pembroke for four years, and uh, there's no sign of stoppage with the government access. Um, as for the year of 2016, including tonight, we've covered 19 board of select meetings, uh, one town meeting, and as of tonight, one, um, actually 15 Pembroke board committee meetings. That was the initiative where we started covering the other boards and committee meetings throughout Town Hall. And uh, as of as I speak tonight, our uh, gentleman Ryan Craig is taping tonight's um, Zoning Board of Appeals, which is on the other side. And uh, we've also got about nine episodes so far of Pembroke today taping. And uh, government access is as robust as ever. And uh, we've got some big changes coming, some really exciting ones though. Um, please pardon me, I have notes here. Uh, we, uh, as far as like local, county, and state informational programs, we have you know, nine programs or nine episodes of uh, Pembroke today. Um, and then we're on our fourth episode of Elder Savvy with Anna Siri, who's a wonderful person. And we're still getting her uh, bulletin board announcements and we're posting them on the, on the Government Access Bulletin Board. And then we've got um, shows coming from uh, Sheriff McDonald with the State Communities, uh, Registered Report with the Plymouth County Register, John Buckley, Scales of Justice with the DA Tim Cruz, and Crosstalk with uh, State Rep Cutler, which is produced out of the Living Hansen Station. And uh, one very exciting thing coming for, um, for government access is going to be a new program with uh, District Attorney Cruz and Chuck McDonald to address the, um, the ongoing opioid crisis. Our plan is to start at the end of June, and uh, that's currently in the works right now. And, um, given the, the situation, what's happened, we figure it's a pretty timely topic to, to tackle it. And that's a, that's a show that's also going to be coming out of the Plymouth County uh, Task Force on opiate um, abuse. So it, the, the sheriff and the DA came to us saying that they wanted to do this together. So they're going to be speaking about the issue from all different points of view, from mm -hmm. the scientific end, from the medical end, from supports and services available in all of our communities, and talking about what we can all be doing together to work through this problem. So we're really excited to be working with them to yeah. bring this to the towns, considering especially the impact it has on all of our communities. Some of the shows Dave was telling you about, in addition to the regular government meetings that we cover, and of course every board of selectmen meeting, um, but the town administration tells us which other boards you'd also like to see covered. Our informational government programming really helps to bring background information and additional information to residents. So that's where the talk shows come from, yep. being able to really get into issues that are happening in the communities and talk about them in more detail. So Dave is constantly working to increase that programming and to add new programming as needed. So we're always looking to hear from you we had one that they, it was special a couple of years ago when they were working on the community building. Yes, uh, Pembroke Community Center update. Um, when Greg Hanley mm -hmm. was sitting on the board at the time, we produced a show regarding that. Um, that was born out of an idea with um, coverage of the community center committee, uh, but there were so many people who was trying to joke over on schedules that we thought it'd be a great idea to have a talk show format. Um, we haven't taped any new episodes lately, but that was a, a pretty robust show that we produced. And that's always an option, so you don't have to have a regular ongoing show yes. in order to be able to do some special programming on the government channel to get information out to folks. One of the other things that, uh, of course, you know that we've been doing um, since we started providing services in the town is our educational access program. And that's the program that's really exploded, I think, in the town of Pembroke since we started. Most of you knew uh, Caroline Garrett, who started the program at Pembroke High School. Um, she, just at the beginning of this year, moved to New York. She's moving into the commercial end of the industry and doing a wonderful job already, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, we have a new young man who is a Kingston resident who's working with us. His name is Zach Dolan. He's doing a great job. He took over in January. The reason he's not here tonight is because he has four events this week <laughs> at the high school. You guys have such a robust um, performing arts program. He's been covering all of the events with students at the schools. Um, he was at the graduation, of course, on Saturday. He was there on Thursday night with, with Julie. Uh, giving away two scholarships to two very deserving graduates from Pembroke High School. So that program continues to grow. Right now we have um, our staff members doing 20 hours a week with Pembroke, and we're planning to continue that moving forward. We have a classroom in the Fine Arts Wing at the school, um, and in that room we have camera equipment, we have editing equipment, and we also have what we call a studio in a box, that they're able to take anywhere in the school to be able to provide coverage, whether it be taped or live, of all the events that happen. And Zach's done some really great things with those students. They're uh, really getting their uh, their experience in. One, uh, two of the students who are working with them this year for their senior project, they for the last couple of months have been working with PCF. So 
So they've been producing pieces for the news about Pembroke, and they've really been able to build up a white portfolio for themselves going into college. So we're really proud of what they've been able to do also. Yeah. Some of the other things we want to tell you about, we have um, this past summer, we have a youth program um, that does documentary work in the summer, and it's a two-week program. It's for kids going into eighth and ninth grade, and for the last two years, they've won national awards. Um, last summer, they did a piece on Fidelis, which, as you know, is a local business, and we just found out they won a national award. Um, we have another program coming up this summer. It's going to be the last week in July and the first week in August. We still have a few spaces open, so if there are people watching, you can just check out the website, pactv.org, for more information and to be able to get registration forms. Anything else you want to cover for government? Uh, well, as far as our uh, government programming, it's also still available as uh, video on demand. So the select meetings and the Pembroke Board Committee meetings are um, they are available as video on demand by Wednesday um, for the selectmen, and the Pembroke Board Committee meetings are available as video on demand by Thursday. Uh, it seems like a, a lot of the viewership has uh, aimed more toward the internet since we live in the, the age of YouTube. The people are watching our stuff on the website, um, and it's been it's been really great. Um, and the added benefit now is that social media, where we're able to share things to let people know when it's going to air, things of that, of that nature. And just a heads up, um, just a reminder, the Pembroke Board Committee meetings, um, they're taped on Monday and then they will replay on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock and 3.30 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday on the government channel. For people interested in seeing the schedules as well, if you go to the main page of PACTV.org, you can click on the government tab and you can take a look at any of the schedules for any of the channels that we operate. Yep. And each schedule goes by the day, so when you click on the link, you'll see Wednesday, if it's a Wednesday that you're clicking on it. And uh, we'll, we'll send out um, programming schedules to, to the board as well. And we're sure you're all familiar with PACTV Community News, or PCN. Your town administrator has been on, I think, is it three segments so far this year on Town Talk? Talking about talking about what's happening in the town of Pembroke, we're really excited. Our 200th episode is going to be airing uh, this November, and so far this year we've already done 21 segments for the town of Pembroke. Um, one of the ways that show is going to grow, there's been the biggest problem Kim and her news team have had, honestly, is being able to keep up with all the stories because there's so much happening in our four towns. So they've decided this summer that they're going to add on to PCN. Um, Kim and her team, they do a number of lifestyle segments, such as local eats and things on health and wellness and decor and different uh, different personal interests. So starting this summer, they're going to be having two new segments, or I'm sorry, two new episodes each month. It's going to be called PCN Life. So that's going to be where a lot of the lifestyle pieces are going to air, and that way it's going to allow for more of the stories that are happening in our four towns. PCN airs every Thursday night on Channel 13. Um, but you also, as Dave was saying, you can watch that video on demand, mm -hmm. and you can also watch it on YouTube. Yep. We've, uh, we have a PAC TV video share channel, which, uh, which encompasses everything from uh, PAC TV community news and government programming. And uh, as of today, we covered an event over the library uh, that was hosted by Josh Cutler uh, related to Lyme disease and uh, ticks, which will be there on the government channel soon, and it will be on YouTube as well. Some of the other things that are coming up too uh, that we're talking about, we are going to be having some upgrades at our studio that are going to be able to uh, continue to improve, improve upon the quality of what you're seeing on the channels. It's going to be uh, digital versus analog. So phase one of that installation is happening this month. Uh, phase two will be coming a little further down the line. It's going to be able to add some additional uh, streaming capabilities and live capabilities for us moving forward. Right now, we're also working on um, what we can do this fall leading into election season and also to improve upon the candidate options or candidate statement options that we have. We're working with Gatehouse Media to develop some new products and hopefully to be able to give more coverage to our local elections and folks who are running for office in addition to the candidate statements yep. that Dave and his team already did. Mm -hmm. It's been some pretty exciting changes that have been coming. And as you've seen, you've seen how we've grown just in the four years and, and we're constantly trying to improve upon and build yep. upon the services we offer our four towns. Part of that growth, one of the other exciting things that's happened this year is our board decided to reorganize or relook at our, our management structure to better be able to fit the needs of our organization, where it is today, and where we see it moving forward. So Nancy Richard, who you're familiar with as our executive director, she's now our director of finance. Julie Thompson is now our director of administration. And Dan Rodriguez is now our managing director. So from your point of view, there probably won't be many visible changes and, and it's been going along very well with the team working together. And we've also started, um, on a different note, we've started posting the agendas for the bulletin board. So they'll be airing uh, both on the, on the channel and on the website. So if people miss that bulletin board, they can just go to pack.org 
and now there will be a link for the community board where they can see the agenda, in addition to the internet posting. We've talked a lot about our community services and our government services, uh, but we also do have a lot available to the public. So if there are people in the community who are interested, we couldn't possibly do the amount of work we do in our communities without our volunteers. Mm -hmm. And they're all folks who live in our four towns who have an interest in video production, who have an interest in their communities and volunteer work. Uh, so if there's anybody who's watching who's interested in finding out how they can either volunteer or if they have an idea for their own television show and would like to do something themselves, we are there and we exist to, to teach people how to create their own programming and have access to a public channel. Any questions? Lou and I were talking earlier about um, the quality of the signal. Mm -hmm. And I think Dave you pointed out to me how there was going to be a change and mm -hmm. how that was going to happen. So you might want to share that with the board. Uh, yeah. Quality of the signal specifically for your government channel for live. Was there any any specific well, thing you were it looking had at? To, it had to do with where the signal was coming in, as opposed, to well, like to Pembroke and to, to the studio in Plymouth, as opposed to now or in the future, it's going to go s straight to Plymouth. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Dan Rodriguez, our managing director, is uh, addressing that now. Um, but it's going to be a reengineering of how we transmit the channels to Comcast. Um, it's going to become a digital format. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the, the mental capacity that Dan has, but I can assure it's going to be a major improvement. If you'd like, if you'd like more specific information about the engineering um, behind all of that and what's going to be changing moving forward, we can always schedule a time for Dan to come in and give yes. you a five-minute uh, five update. The, the largest change is that we're going from analog to digital. Yes. So yep. the, the, the quality is going to bump up. It's not going to be HD, but it's certainly going to, going to be a greater well, quality than Well, actually, it is now. going to be HD. Oh. Correct me if I'm wrong. Better. It is going to be HD, but we cannot transmit or cable cast HD. We do not have an HD channel to put it on. So the signal that's leaving the studio is mm -hmm. HD, but what people are seeing at home is standard definition. Okay. There has, been, there has been a movement um, across the state, and as contracting is coming up in different towns, trying to negotiate with the cable companies to be able to have access to HD channels, as well as to be able to have our channel guides appear on the channels for viewers to be able to find your programming. On, on that, <coughs> can I ask, how, how will PAC-TV help the town of Pembroke uh, when our cable contract ends? Our cable contract is up in 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, right now we're... Uh, forming a committee to oh, negotiate yeah. a, a new contract with, with Comcast, and uh, I'd like PAC TV to be partners in that. Thank you. Um, we and I will ask um, one of our, our board presidents is here, so if I'm speaking or if there's anything you'd like to add, please please let us know and please feel free to join us. Um, my understanding is with the with the cable, working with the cable advisory committees and working with recontracting with each cable company. Our job has been more along the lines of assisting the town and negotiating for what we help think would be best for you when it comes to public educational and government programming, um, and helping the town to be able to advocate for what you think your needs are when it comes to customer service and other issues with the cable company. For instance, talking about things like what are the percentages you're receiving for public educational and government, what are the things that you would like to, what, how you think the town could benefit from increased services perhaps. Yeah, well, we'd certainly want to use you as a resource resource for uh, within your program. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, I can speak a little bit to that. I found out that uh, Nancy Richards mm -hmm. has been doing some negotiating for other towns with Comcast. I have a, a meeting with her next week. Okay, great. And I, I'm going to get some information to bring back to the board on just what uh, your company has been doing for the other towns and uh, get a feel for how that how that has been working. Okay, great. And in Massachusetts, each town negotiates individually with the cable right. company, so it's not uncommon that there would be a central like ours if we're providing services to more than one town, but there to be more than one contract with, with different details in each contract based on what the town has negotiated for themselves. And Nancy is a in addition to being director of finance, she is also doing work with the with the recontracting because our contracts are coming up over the next several years in all four of our towns, Plymouth being the first this year. Well, she's uh, been very helpful over the phone. Wonderful. And uh, she suggested that we sit down and uh, 
you can give me some information on that that I can bring back to the board. So, Wonderful. So Great. I'll be doing that. Now, one of the things I'd like to uh, thank you folks for is all the additional uh, boards and committees that have been covered in the past year. It's been about 20 of them. With, da with David yeah. and the team, yes. So that, that is really good because we would we would like to continue with that and maybe okay. even add some because the folks at home would like to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And this is an excellent way for them to do it at their leisure and still keep up with the events in the town and the important things that uh, that our folks are in the process of working on. Absolutely. We're really glad to hear that. And, and another way, as I mentioned before, with the, with the informational programming, if you find it being challenging, of only being able to cover the other boards certain, you know, say once a month, yeah. on average is what you're doing right now, correct? Uh, yeah, for the, for the commercial program. There's always the option for a town administrator or another elected official, if you decide you would like to have an ongoing talk show to bring in members of other boards or to be able to educate people about hot topics in towns, things that are happening in the different boards that might not be able to always be covered in, in meetings. If, yeah. if you, there isn't enough opportunity to cover all the meetings, that's always another option doesn't even have to be ongoing, as I mentioned earlier. You can come in and do a special if there's something coming up that you feel um, residents need more information about to be able to make informed decisions. Uh, an example is we produce a program with uh, Kingston Town Planner, and it's a limited series, but Kingston unveiled a master plan. Um, so it's an ongoing series right now, but it's limited. And I think his plan is to give about 20 episodes. But that's a, a great example of something we can do with, with camera if you're interested. Only thing we can't guarantee is we can't guarantee a makeup for television. You'll have to come in. Coming by yourself. Well, the lewd example is the one that we did with Lisa on, yes. a, on a trash program, and mm -hmm. we're going to be doing a follow up on that. And we explained uh, in a half hour show about what the new trash program is going to be. We have videos or slides yep. and pictures, and we'll probably um, do a uh, demonstration of the uh, operation here at Town Hall Great. that uh, PAC TV is, you know, has volunteered to. The tape so that we can show the residents how the, how the operation is actually going to work with the, with the toters and the new machine. So that'll be uh, the second segment of our uh, program on the new trash program. Yep, and you're on YouTube now, actually. That, that show is on YouTube. So it can get to more people. You can yep. also talk to the folks at Gatehouse um, about perhaps linking some of these videos of the informational programming on the Wicked Local site. So the, the more places you have to get the information out, the uh, better reach you're going to have with residents. And there is one thing we did. It was our, it's the first time we ever did this. Hosting town meetings on YouTube. And uh, Pebble had its first town meeting posted to YouTube. After it was, it was uh, recorded and aired live. But uh, I think it, um, it got over 15 views so far. And it's living on YouTube now. Can I ask, uh, speaking of that, the, the on demand menu, mm -hmm. uh, not everything seems to be on demand uh, through your website. Uh, is there another way to access every bit of programming through YouTube, and, and how do you link to that other than Googling the, the there is. title? Um, all the government meetings by default, they have to, they, we always put them as video on demand, and any um, informational program we produce outside, or any informational we prog programming we produce inside becomes video on demand. Um, anything that's outside programming, um, we don't use that as video on demand. It's because we have a server, and the, the server can only take up so, so much space, and um, automatically the communities we serve that takes precedent um, over outside programming. But we can make that available as video on demand. So. With our new equipment, we're going to have more video on demand capabilities, yes. and once things are installed, we'll be we'll be putting information out to our communities as to how they can reach that. Mm -hmm. There is some programming that never will be video on demand, however, and that's things that are produced by independent folks in the community. It's not our content, um, and it's for our free speech channel. So we are also not. We aren't responsible for the content, nor do we own it. Um, so we can't put something out on the internet that we're not responsible for. I know one thing that would probably be good for uh, me, Jim, that's right. um, that, that would be good for interest because uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of people that um, I receive calls from or talk to. Um, is the Route 14 project or any of the bigger projects that's going on in town? Is, uh, why are they cutting down so many trees? What are they doing now? How, how are the roads so? There's a lot of people that have interest that have no way of probably finding that out unless they call the DPW director or whatever. And naturally, he's busy. Uh, so it'll be during the day, but probably something like that, even even if it was on the agenda that we did it here once a 
once or twice a month or something, and mm. maybe you had somebody from um, either the police or the EPW or something to come in and talk about any kind of road closures. I mean, there's a lot of stuff coming up. It's within the next three years, so I'm sure that people would be interested in um, stuff like that. We'd be happy to sit down with you guys and hash that out. Yeah. <coughs> and those are things that you can talk about on Town Talk, too, for, yep. for shorter bits of information. And, and those, um, any of those segments, they're by themselves online, so they're all on um, PCN's page on YouTube. So those are things you can also link to the town website. You could ask to share with Wicked Local uh, to be able to make those segments available to as many people in, in as many places as possible. Uh, could you just talk about the data that you have of viewership? Um, you know, uh, the, how, how many eyeballs that are actually watching it? Uh, like a, a Nielsen rating type, and on your website, uh, maybe how many clicks you get? Just curious if, if there's data to support. Uh, <coughs> It's, it's a really good question, and it's one we get asked and we ask all of the time. Unfortunately, we're not given the information from the cable companies as to the number of viewers. We can tell you how many households are subscribers in our different communities, but we're not able to break it down to say this many people are watching the Board of Selectmen's meeting at this time. We're able to track clicks and views online. Our marketing director has spent a lot of time researching and studying um, online trends to be able to constantly improve um, the viewership online and to be able to get information out to our communities through PCN, through a lot of the different pieces that Dave does with uh, with our town elected and appointed officials. Oh, just a point of uh, public information. So some folks, when we first changed the PAC TV, were concerned that, well, they don't have cable and they want mm -hmm. uh, community access, if, if you remember back when it was a local programming station. Yes. So could you just uh, let the folks at home who, who would be watching this or, or hear from a friend that they can access all the programming through your website? Yes, anything anything that PAC-TV produces as an organization, so any of our government programming, our original programming, such as public service announcements, um, PCN, any of the things like Titan TV News that we do at Pembroke High School, all of that is available on the channel, but also online. If it's something that's produced by an independent producer, again, since that's not our content, we can't we can't put that out there online, but we help our producers and members learn how to put their own programming um, online if they choose. So if people go to Pack TV Video Share, if they go to PCN on YouTube, if they just go to our website, there there are places all throughout the website to be able to link people to anything that we do have online, as well as getting to video demand directly on the website. So it's just simply Pack TV, P -A -C -T -V org, and you'll find all the links you need right there. Good. Any other questions? Thank you very much for coming in. I would like to say that uh, I have left out uh, someone tonight when I introduced you. Uh, Gary Gumpright is here. Thank you, Gary, for coming. My He's pleasure. been a very big uh, supporter of the town of Pembroke uh, with Pat TV, and uh, just wanted to recognize Gary for being here tonight. Thank you, Gary. Mr. Chairman, if I could just say the, the uh, dedication piece on Carl Pratt was uh, well done. He was uh, an important guy in high school sports. He, we miss him. Yeah, he was the cable TV, what Bill Wilhelm is, the radio. Uh, that's really saying something. Absolutely. We, we definitely miss Carl. He is an amazing community supporter. Uh, 25 years he produced video sports page, so there are generations that grew up knowing, knowing Carl Pratt. Over a thousand shows. We were honored to work with him. Well, thank you very much for coming in tonight and giving us this update. I think we're very pleased with your performance Glad in the past year, and we're looking forward to all these great new things that you've got planned. Thank you, and we welcome your input at any time. Please feel free to contact any one of us, and if you'd like Dan to come in to talk a little bit more about the technology, we'd be happy to arrange that for you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Uh, we have a public hearing uh, this evening, scheduled for 7.30, and uh, I think we have the folks here. Would you like to come up front, please? This public hearing is to hear public comment in regards to the package store license transfer application of Shalit Patel, sole owner, manager, and 
shareholder of G&D Food Corporation, uh, doing business as Pudding Brook Pantry. This license is exercised at 270 Washington Street, currently by Matish Patel of Pudding Pantry, Inc. Uh, the applicant has satisfied the Corey requirements. There is no ZBA requirement on this package store transfer. Uh, we have all the information in front of us. If you'd like to introduce yourselves. My name is Attorney George Perry, and this is Shailesh Patel, who is the sole shareholder and officer of the, of the corporation, which is purchasing the, the business. I have just a brief summary, which uh, you have in the other documents, but this indicates the Thank you. material that we've covered. Thank you. Briefly, uh, Shailish, I've known him and his family uh, in connection with several transactions. They're people of very high moral standards and they work hard um, and they're very diligent in conducting their businesses uh, in an honorable way. Um, he uh, has um, more than 10 years in working in uh, businesses of this kind, uh, not as the manager of the liquor license, but as uh, helping to conduct those businesses. Um, and as I said, he'd, he'd be the sole officer and director of, of the corporation. Uh, he's planning to work full time uh, in the business. Um, I believe he meets all the uh, statutory standards in terms of age uh, and residency and experience. Uh, the um, business is being uh, financed in part by Rockland Trust, which has issued a commitment for the loan. The seller is financing the inventory and his savings covers the remainder of the purchase price. <coughs> and there'll be a pledge of the liquor license to Rockland Trust uh, and they pay off of that loan. And then also they've made arrangements with the, the landlord for the assignment of the existing lease. So Is there good. any questions for Shailish? Uh, Does the board have any questions for the applicant? Uh, not hearing any questions. Uh, do we have anyone that's uh, here tonight in opposition? Uh, hearing none, I would uh, move on and uh, ask, do we have a motion? Mr. Chairman, uh, I'll move to apply to approve the application for the transfer package store wine and malt license uh, 0960 from Pudding Brook Pantry, Inc. to Shilish Patel, manager of G. And V Food Corporation doing business as Pudding Book Pantry to be exercised at 270, also known as 264 Washington Street, consisting of a 50 by 50 foot construction on a concrete slab, one large room, one small room, plus a walk in cooler, all of the same, all on the same floor, entrance and exit on Washington Street, and a fire exit at the rear. Have a motion uh, from Bill. Do I have second. a sec second by Arthur? Any questions from the board members? Hearing none, I would ask for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, four to zero. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Wish Thank you the best of luck. There's, There's a, a second, second motion. motion please. Um, I, I'll move it uh, to approve the pledge of the license number 0960. 00026 held by G&B Food Corporation doing business at Pudding Brook Pantry uh, to be a pledge to Rock on Trust Company. Thank second. you, Arthur. Is there a second uh, motion by Arthur, second by Bill. Any questions? All in favor of motion two? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, four to zero. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank Best you. of luck Bye. to you. Thank you, Arthur. Mrs. Chokot has been very helpful. I just want to say she's very efficient. Thank you, Thank you very much. It's always good to hear. <laughs> uh, next item on the agenda is uh, the reappointment to the Old Colony Elder Services Board of Directors. Uh, Elder Services has requested the Board of Selectmen to reappoint their nominee to the Board of Directors. And the Council on Aging Board has met and unanimously nominated 
to reappoint COA Director Anna Seary to serve as the delegate to the Board of Directors. Any questions? Mr. Chairman, I will move the appointment of Anna Seary as the old county elder services representative. Second. Uh, motion by Arthur, second by Bill. Any questions? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Support is zero. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the Board of Selectmen's summer schedule, which uh, we have before us. Um, this schedule is proposed to run from June 13th to September 5th, Labor Day. Regular weekly meetings will resume on September 12th. The Board of Selectmen will meet in June on the 13th and the 27th in July on the 11th and the 25th, in August on the 8th and the 22nd. In September, we will resume our regular weekly meetings starting September 12th. If any major issues arrive, the chairman could, can call a special meeting of the board. Uh, any questions on the summer schedule? Hearing none, do I have a motion to accept this schedule? Accept as written, Mr. Chairman. Second. Uh, motion by Bill, second by Arthur. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's four to zero. Thank you. Uh, we have the minutes of May 23rd to consider. Do I hear a motion? I would move that we accept the minutes of um, May 23rd as written. Second. Uh, motion by Arthur to accept, second by Dan. All in favor? No. Aye. Opposed? Four to zero. Uh, under old business, I've been asked to make this plea that the Board of Selectmen uh, thought it is very important to establish a town government study committee, which we have done several months ago. We got off to a good start, but then uh, things have dwindled down to uh, where we don't have enough members uh, to hold a meeting. Uh, there has been some renewed interest on people that have inquired about it, and that is very hopeful, and I'm very pleased to hear that. So I'd like to announce that we are looking for town government study committee members and if you would like more information or would like to apply, if you would contact the Selectman's Office, uh, Sabrina Chilcott will be happy to hear from you and to give you the information. Thank you. Any other old business? Uh, go to the town administrator's report. While we're on the theme of old business, um, Nick Zucchello, uh, Jr. and myself will present to the board an update on the uh, solar project and the uh, uh, conversations that we've been having with Sun Edison and power options. Uh, for Thanks, Have you seen uh, there's an, an article uh, recently, I think it was an uh, AP article, but I, I read it in a local newspaper that many states are doing away with the uh, with, with the tax credit for for solar energy. Uh, Arizona, Hawaii, many several states already have. Other states have uh, have only <coughs> pushed the tax credit forward a short amount of time, and with the thought that they m they may end it. Uh, it's not the case in Massachusetts right now. I think we just extended it for four to six years, uh, something like that. But well, it's an emergency legislation <coughs> that allows that, and uh, that's something that Nick and I will, uh, um, you know, update the board on um, what Sun Edison's plans are, uh, what the uh, state regulations are, um, what the time frame is for the the time frame for the project itself and uh, you know the board can make a determination after uh, next month. Yeah. And, I, and I, I said tax credit but net metering is the term I should be using. Very 
good. Anything else, uh, Ed? No, we're uh, we're moving forward on the uh, trash project, as I mentioned earlier. And, you know, as we get some some information regarding the delivery of the toters and the, the uh, delivery out to the residents, we'll make sure the board knows that and we'll announce it. Pretty good. Um, uh, do any of the selectmen have an ask the selectmen question? Hearing none, I would move on to new business. Any new business before the board? Uh, hearing none, uh, upcoming issues on June 13th and 27th, this board will review the committee and commission annual reappointments. Uh, we have a list of those that's been provided to us this evening, and we'll be reviewing that uh, so that when we meet on the 13th and the 27th, we'll have a chance to review all of the folks that uh, have signified that they would like to be reappointed. Um, we have a, uh, some information from the Division of Aeronautics that uh, they will be available after June 15th when they return from vacation and they have uh, identified several days in the week when they would be available for uh, us to talk to them about the questions that have been requested and provided by abutters to the airfield uh, that this board does not have the answers to, but uh, the gentleman we're gonna talk to will give us the guidance that we need to answer those questions. And as you remember, Bill and I have been appointed by the board to sit down with the gentleman and we have the questions that have been submitted to this board from the abutters and uh, we will have a very meaningful meeting, get all these answers and pass them on to the folks that are most interested. So that'll take place before the end of June. We will have that meeting. Uh, but I might say if you have a conversation with them, it's not um, it's not a um, it's not a big problem for for us to even go there and meet them because the um, the Hingham ferry is now running, so we could actually go over to Hingham uh, up on the Hingham ferry and uh, they're right in the building, um, not that far away from the uh, Logan Fire, which is right next door to. Uh, where that place mm -hmm. is, so it um, may even be an enjoyable ride for you. Um, if, uh, <laughs> are you going to go by a boat? Are you uh, going to bring your fishing pole? Or? <laughs> no, I don't think you'd be able to fish on oh, one of those. But, fish. Uh, but, well, we'll uh, get together and. Uh, but if it's more convenient for them. Yeah, we will talk to the uh, gentleman who has. I don't have a problem going up there. Right, so. he's been willing to meet with us now, and uh, we've set some tentative dates. Yeah. So, whatever makes the most sense. Uh, we will certainly do. Um, let's see. Does anyone have any other issues they would like to bring up at this time? Yes. My name is Carol Dodge, and I'm here to say thank you to the first responders from the dive teams that gave the drowning victims family closure at Silver Lake and Halifax the other day. Uh, very proud of our board. Thank you. Good. Thank right. you for mentioning that. That's certainly a well-deserved thank you to those I folks. I actually uh, talked to the fire chief the other day and uh, offered my uh, boat on Toonboat because it takes 12 people uh, on it, you know, for services to go, you know, to go over there. But uh, the uh, being the water as murky as it was and all that. Um, I understand that they brought in some very new high-tech uh, electronic equipment and stuff that state police has to, um, to search the bottom. I'm pretty sure that that's how they finally located them, which is uh, which is something that uh, Pembroke should be looking at in the future. And that we should definitely support the fire chief if he's um, if he's looking to either do that as a county group where they all get together and everybody puts in the money to get some pieces of equipment like that. I think it's it's um, well worth it to retrieve 
them early, early in the in the stages of the rescue ra rather than a recovery. So, uh, right. It was a sad a weekend sad for yeah. several people. Is there any other business before the board? Hearing none, I will announce that the next regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen will be on Monday, June 13th at 7 p.m. And I will uh, entertain, uh, Mr. Thorne, do we have an executive session this evening? We have none. So I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn this public meeting. I would move to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Motion by office. Bill. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Four to zero. Thank you for watching us tonight, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again next Monday, the 13th. Thank you.